Looking for a life that's filled with meaning and purpose? Then stay tuned to WOTJ Moorhead City and FBNRadio.com. Tell me the story of Jesus right on my heart. Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. Our gracious Heavenly Father, give us wisdom as we look into thy word today. Speak to my heart and speak through these lips of clay to the unseen tens of thousands across this great country who listen to the gospel by the means of radio today. Our Father, there are many today without the Lord. There are many who need God. And I pray that you'll speak to hearts and save souls. And we'll give God the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. I've made the statement many times on the radio that we will never, this side of heaven, know the importance that God places upon his word. The psalmist declares that the word of God is forever settled in heaven. Now, God has seen to it that the devil does not, will not, shall not, Get his hands on the word of God. If the devil could discredit the word of God, and if the devil could do away with the word of God, then the devil could frustrate the plan of God and wreck redemption. But thank God, the devil cannot destroy the word. I don't know of any chapter in all the word of God that gives us a more forceful picture of the power of the word than Acts 16. Now, in Acts 16, verses 6 through 11, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, of course, I should mention the first five verses, Paul finds Timothy, this young preacher that became such a power for God. Then, in verses 6 through 11, Paul is guided by the Spirit of God through the Macedonian village, uh, a vision, a vision. And he goes to the Macedonian village to preach the word of God. Now in verse 12, and from thence to Philippi, and so on, and then abiding there certain days, in verse 13, on the Sabbath. Now somebody wants to know why Paul met on the Sabbath. Beloved, if you will be reasonable and junk your religious ideas... It is no trouble to see and to understand why Paul met on the Sabbath. This is the transition period. Judaism has been in force for many years, and they kept the Lord's Sabbath. Now, they are still worshiping on the Sabbath, because this is the transition. The disciples met on the first day of the week, to be sure. But the Jews and the people of Judaism still met on the Sabbath. And so Paul met with the people because that's the day they met so that he could minister to them. And of course, later on, it was Paul that instructed the Corinthians to meet upon the first day of the week and bring their offerings upon the first day of the week and so forth. Now, on the Sabbath, they went out of the city by the riverside where prayer was wont to be made and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted thither. Now, on the Sabbath day, Paul attended a ladies' prayer meeting. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira. And by the way, that was a metropolis. That was a giant city, I mean in that day. And it was an outstanding city. And there were many rich people there. And they had money and money to spare. And this woman worshipped God. She worshipped God. She knew nothing of Christ. She worshipped God. And she heard us. Now I want you to keep this in mind. 
It was Paul who said to the church at Ephesus, For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It was Paul who said to the Romans, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Ephesians 2.8 and Romans 10.17. Now keep this in mind. This man said, by grace are you saved. And grace is applied by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing with the word. So Lydia heard the word. You say, Brother Green, what do you think Paul preached? He said, God forbid that I should glory save in the cross. He had a singular message. Every message he delivered had as its center and its soul the cross of Jesus Christ. God forbid that I declare unto you anything but the cross. Paul said, I determine not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. He had only one message, and that was the message of the cross. All right. So he preached to Lydia and the ladies at the prayer meeting. And they heard. They heard us. That's what he says. They heard us. Next verse now, reading on. And a certain woman named Lydia, seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us. Whose heart the Lord opened. Whose heart the Lord opened. Now, how did the Lord open her heart? Is not my word like a hammer that breaketh a heart in pieces? Jeremiah thundered out hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus. Is not my word like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? And so the word of God that Paul preached, the message of the cross, crushed the heart of Lydia. God opened her heart. And listen what happened. Whose heart the Lord opened? That she attended uh, to unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized, do you think Paul would have baptized a woman that did not believe and confess Christ? It was Paul who said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It was Paul who said, God sent me not to baptize but to preach the gospel. 1 Corinthians 1.17 So the only reason that the apostle Paul baptized Lydia she believed, she received, she confessed, she was saved, and she asked for Christian baptism, and he baptized her. So, when she was baptized and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful, to the Lord come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. She insisted that we spend the day with her. Now, the thing that I want to point out, and I must hurry if I finish my message this gospel that Paul preached reached the heart of the elite, the elite, the rich, dignified dealer in purple. And my friend, only millionaires wore purple in that day. Only rich people wore purple in that day. The rich man was clothed in purple and fine linen. Riches, listen, purple, purple denoted riches and royalty. And this woman, Lydia, was a merchant in the garments of kings and millionaires. She heard the gospel. She was a worshiper of God, but she had not heard the story of the crucifixion and the grace that brings salvation. She heard the word. Faith comes by hearing, and faith brings saving grace. And when grace comes into our heart, we're saved, and we want Christian baptism, because we are saved, not to be saved. So the gospel reaches the elite, and the elite are saved through the simple message of the gospel. But now watch the progress. Verse 16, Acts 16, 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by fortune-telling, or soothsaying. The same followed Paul and Silas. Now watch this, step by step. And cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now are you listening, dear friend? 
How in the world did this poor fortune-telling girl know anything about the way of salvation? There is only one reasonable conclusion. There is only one reasonable way to understand, and that is she had followed Paul and Silas for several days, and they preached salvation through the shed blood of Jesus. So she said, these men are the servants of the Most High God. These men show us the way of salvation. Now watch it. And she did this many days, but Paul being grieved turned and said, To the Spirit I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Paul turned and this woman said, These men are the servants of the high God, and they tell us the way of salvation. So she heard the gospel. She heard the message of the shed blood. She heard the message of grace and grace applied by faith. She believed and she confessed, These men are the servants of the Most High God. She confessed all she knew. And Paul commanded the devil to come out of her. And she gave up her soothsaying. She gave up her fortune telling. She gave up the labor that was bringing riches to her owners. She was a slave. She was a slave to the devil, a slave to witchcraft, and a slave to men who lusted after riches and made merchandise of her soul. She was a wicked creature. So we step from the sublime to the ridiculous, from the elite to the gutter, despicable woman that had fallen and was possessed and demoned. She was full of demons. Jesus comm uh, Paul commanded the demon to come out in the name of Jesus, and he came out that same hour, at that very moment. All right. Now, of course, when her masters heard about this, they were very angry, and they arrested Paul and Silas and had them beaten, and they put them in the inner cell, and they fastened their feet in the stocks. I read verse 24. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks? And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed when Lydia was saved. They were at a prayer meeting when the fortune teller got under conviction, and they're praying again. You want me to tell you something? I pray God you won't get mad. I beg you not to get mad. I implore you not to get mad. Please don't get mad. You know what's wrong today? We're having too many shindigs, barn dances, soup suppers, God bless you, blowouts, and feeds in the churches and not enough fasting and prayer. Mark it down. I challenge anybody uh, to prove that I've said an untruth and I've brought a false accusation. My friend, souls are saved when people pray. But when we feast and make gluttons of ourselves and sit around tables and crack jokes and laugh and sip tea and nibble on cookies, then talk about revival and wonder why it doesn't come. Revivals are not born in dining halls. Revivals are born in a prayer room, in the upper room, in the prayer meeting, when men intercede and break through and storm heaven with their prayers. There was a prayer meeting just before Lydia was converted. There was a prayer meeting just before the soothsayer was converted. And there was a prayer meeting just before the jailer found God. Read it. Midnight prayer meeting. Midnight prayer meeting. You keep folks at church today till midnight, mister. And I'll guarantee you, if looks would kill you, you'd be to bury. Now, that's right. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awakened out of his sleep, seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and he would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, we're all here. You don't have to lock up Christians. They'll stay put. You don't have to fence in Christians. Oh, no, you don't have to fence them in, handcuff them. They, they walk straight. They know green pastures from garbage cans. Are you listening, kind friend? Christians know green pastures from garbage cans. 
You don't have to fence in sheep. They know the voice of the shepherd, and a stranger they will not follow. So he called for a light. He came trembling. He sprang in. He sprang in. Came trembling. He fell down before Paul and Silas. That doesn't sound like some of our sissy altar calls today, does it? I'll repeat that. I said that doesn't sound like some of our sissy, handshaking, smiling, vote them in, take them in, join us, line up with us, unite with us, come into our fellowship. That doesn't sound like some of this modern church entity, does it? Then he called for a light. He sprang in. When I see a person come down the aisle, I like to see them move like they mean business. I don't like to see them drag like they're a little bit sorry they started. I like to see them move on, move on to God. And he sprang in and he called for a light and he trembled. He trembled. Did you tremble when you made your decision? Did you tremble or did you just shake a preacher's hand and smile and say, I'd like to join? You tremble. He fell down. I believe in getting on your knees. There are cases where a person can't bow. There are cases where it's impossible for a person to get on their knees. But I'm going to tell you before God, I believe in getting on your knees. I do. I believe in bending your knee before God in prayer when you come to God for salvation. So he fell down and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But wait a minute. How can a pagan who probably had only scarcely heard the name of Jesus knew nothing about faith, knew nothing about the word of God, knew nothing about redemption through the blood. How can he believe? And so verse 32 answers, And they, Paul and Silas, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord. They didn't give the latest report of the convention. They didn't give the latest Sunday school report, facts and figures. They spake unto him the word of the Lord. And to all that were in his house, he heard the word because he exercised faith. He believed, and I'll read it to you in just a moment, and he asked for Christian baptism. The word of God did it. Let me finish now. My time's gone. They spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house, and he took them the same hour of the night, the same of baptizing at midnight. What do you know? They took, he took them the same hour of the night, he washed their stripes and was baptized. He and all his immediately, straightway. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced and rejoiced, believing in God with all his house. Believing in God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Faith and believing are synonymous. You cannot separate them. Now let me show you the message so simple down to earth and yet so powerful and so true. Paul found Timothy. He saw the vision of Macedonia. He heard the Macedonian call. He went. He met Lydia, and Lydia was attending a prayer meeting. He spoke to the ladies. He delivered unto the ladies the word of God, and Lydia believed, and everyone present believed, and he baptized them. So the gospel reaches the elite. And then he moved on to another prayer meeting, and a soothsayer, a poor girl, demoned, heard him for days, and she cried out, these men are servants of the Most High God. And Paul commanded the devil to come out of her, and she was saved, and her masters were very angry. Paul and Silas were thrown in jail, and they prayed at midnight, and the jailer was saved after he heard the word of God. Prayer preceded the conversion of Lydia. The word of God brought her faith. Prayer preceded the saving of the fortune teller. The word of God convinced her that these men were telling the way of salvation. Prayer preceded the conversion of the jailer. The word of God gave him saving faith. Revival comes through prayer. 
soul saved come through prayer. The method of saving them comes through hearing the word of God by grace through faith in the precious word of God. Father, honor the word, save the soul that's nearest hell. Oh God, save the soul that's nearest hell. Reclaim the backslidden and revive the indifferent. For Jesus' sake we pray, and in his precious name, amen. The message you have just heard is available on an audio cassette. To receive your personal copy, write us a letter. Be sure to give today's date. Enclose a gift of at least $3 to cover the cost of production and handling. The address, The Gospel Hour, Box 12-1. 